I'll talk. Um, one of the first things I remember about the process was Asia came in with a bunch of drawings. Um, and she didn't necessarily tell us what they were from or what they were of. She wanted us to interpret them on our own. We kind of all sat down and had a discussion about what we saw, what we felt like maybe they were interpreting, what the colors meant. And then from there, we kind of created some movement separate from the drawings. Um, later on, she explained to us what they were um, as they were drawings from kids in concentration camps and stuff like that. So, uh, but it was interesting that she wanted us to have our own interpretation first before telling us the actual background of it. That's like part of the creative process for her. Okay. Anybody else? Um, hi, so I was going to add on to that and say some of the things that I remembered. So one of the first things I remembered from the creative process was that we met in the studio and we were doing a lot of like balletic movement and a lot of stuff that was very like fun and playful. And I remember Asia brought out these like orange tutu skirts that we ended up wearing in the show. And I had like no idea what they meant. And um, part of that like playfulness and like fun kind of theme of the dance became really important because a lot of these drawings and the, the theme of the dance was a lot about the, the children that made these drawings. And um, she wanted us to have that kind of like innocent and playful demeanor within our dancing um, because the um, children in the concentration camp, even though they were under these really harsh conditions, they still found a way to play and create things. So I think that was like super relevant to kind of like what's going on right now. Like we're in kind of a unexpected condition and, you know, things are not what we expected, but we're still finding a way to kind of create and um, make things and come together. So I think that was like really important in the process. Um, I thought it was interesting that that was like kind of one of the first things I remember was the costuming and kind of like the playfulness that um, she wanted to bring out of us as the dancers. So, yeah. Okay, it, it's really interesting. So it's uh, already, I, you know, I hear that uh, this, uh, the beginning of this show, the, the beginning of the rehearsal process was unusual. Uh, I said, it, it, it didn't tell you anything about it. It just throw, you know, gave you some pictures and thought, hey, just play with it and let us know, let me let know what you come up with. But what else do you uh, remember from the preparation for this show that is different uh, from your experience working with other companies? Hi. So the biggest thing that stands out um, to me is kind of similar to what Sarah and Kat had just said in the first question. Um, typically, other choreographers I had worked with in the past, when we would show up to rehearsal, they would kind of go over some kind of inspiration or a story that they were trying to portray. When we came in, we just learned the choreography. Um, at a certain point, Asya started showing us the drawings that the children had done, and we had a discussion about what we each saw in those. Um, but it wasn't really until the piece was completed that we had an understanding of the narrative and what was behind it. And I really liked working in that way because when we were learning the dance and rehearsing it, we didn't have these preconceived ideas about what the movement should be or how we needed to look. We were just dancing organically. And then after the fact, we got to learn more about that meaning. So it was interesting to not have those ideas in your head already and not go into rehearsal thinking, oh, I need to embody this, this, and this just kind of letting it flow in a, in a more organic way. Okay. So you actually got in the flow. Yes. <laughs> it should probably be the most important part of any creative process. Fantastic. So I said, uh, what is the uh, title, maybe even higher? Like how, you know, what is the message for this uh, piece? Sure. So the title for me references one of my beloved Yiddish authors, Ayel Peretz. And since I was little, I remember reading this story about the story takes place in a town. And the gist of the story is basically that there is a rabbi who disappears from his congregation every year around